Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. This time of the year is when many HSC students will be starting what is considered one of the most complex topics of the whole course, balance of payments. Because of its complexity, I figured this is the best time to launch my channel. As the title suggests, my aim is to take complex concepts and make it easy for you to understand. To do well in the balance of payments topic, the first step to understand what it is and to get familiar with relevant terminology. The balance of payments is a record of all transactions flowing in and out of Australia. At this point, let's introduce some terminology. Funds flowing into Australia are called credits. Funds flowing out are called debits. The way I remember this is debits are deductions from Australia. So for example, if I sell exports to China, I'm going to receive export revenue, and that's recorded as a credit. If I'm sending money overseas to repay a loan I owe to a bank in Hong Kong, that's a debit. So now you understand whether transactions are credits or debits, the next step is to figure out which accounts they actually fall into. The balance of payments is broken down into the current account on the left and the capital and financial accounts on the right. What distinguishes the current account from the other two? And here's the first thing that you need to note down. The current account records transactions that are earnings that are non-reversible, whereas the items on the right are reversible. Non-reversible means that it's expected to only go one way. For example, if I sell exports to China and make revenue from that, that is now my money. It's going one way, they can't expect it to go back. And that's why we call it non-reversible. Reversible transactions are part of a two-way process. A better example to highlight the difference between reversible and non-reversible transactions is this. Let's look at the transactions involving loans. Imagine if I borrowed money from Hong Kong and have to pay it back. The repayments have two components, the principal and the interest. The principal is the original amount going back. It's part of a two-way process, therefore it's reversible. The interest is now somebody's earning. It's going one way, not coming back. It's non-reversible, and it gets recorded in the current account. Now let's go deeper with the current account. There are sub-accounts to categorize these non-reversible earnings called balancing goods and services, net primary income, and net secondary income. BOGS, aka trade balance, records proceeds from selling exports and buying imports. MPY, aka primary income balance, records returns on financial investments, such as interest repayments, dividends, or profits. NSY, aka secondary income balance, records miscellaneous earnings, not in the above subcategories, such as insurance payouts and pensions. Now on the other side, let's talk about the financial account first. These are transactions involving the movement of financial assets and liabilities, or in layman's terms, purchasing shares and loan principles. Again, these are reversible because they're expected or are able to be transferred back and forth. This also has five subcategories, direct investment, portfolio investment, financial derivatives, reserve assets, and other investment. Direct investment refers to investment that is more long-term in nature, such as to grow a business. A numerical definition would be the purchase of 10% of the company's shares, which is consistent because not many investors buy 10% of a company just to sell it quickly for speculative capital gain. More speculative and short-term purchases of shares and loans are recorded in the portfolio investment sub-account. And conversely are the purchases of less than 10% of company shares. Financial derivatives are where the sale of financial instruments such as futures, forwards, swaps, and options are recorded. I'll explain this in more detail in another video because it's pretty complex. Transactions made by the RBA are recorded in the reserve assets account. Examples of these transactions include buying and selling of foreign currency or gold in order to influence the exchange rate. Again, we can cover this in future videos about the exchange rate. The other investment subaccount includes other forms of reversible transfers of financial assets that are not categorized as above. And finally, we have the capital account to again record reversible transactions, but this time for non financial assets, such as intellectual assets like patents, copyrights, or franchising licenses. So if you follow the rules in this flowchart, you should be able to sort most transactions into the balance of payments. Let's try this out with the 2019 HSC question nine multiple choice. It's got two transactions that you must sort. First is Australia purchasing a foreign company. Is this transaction non-reversible? No. Is it related to financial assets? Yes, so it's recorded in the financial account, direct investment account to be precise. 
because it's a controlling share. It's more long term. We also know that this is a debit because we're sending money overseas to purchase this foreign company. From this, we already know the answer is A. But let's check the second transaction too. Australian shareholders receive a dividend. Is a dividend non-reversible? Yes, it's somebody's earning, so it goes in the current account, which confirms our answer is A. To be more precise again, dividends are a return on financial investment, so it's recorded in the NPY account of the current account. So while these rules will help you sort most transactions, there are some transactions involving foreign aid that don't follow these rules. Foreign aid can be either tied or untied. Tied means that it is often attached to a specific project or purpose, such as to build a school or infrastructure in a developing country, aka conditional aid. Untied aid is not attached to any purpose. It's up to the government of the poorer country to decide how to spend it. The way I remember this is that conditional aid, C, goes into capital account, whereas non-conditional aid, untied aid, goes into N, NSY. Let's test this out with 2019's HSC question 17. Australia's sending foreign aid specifically to build a road, so it's tied, conditional, therefore a debit in the current account. Australia is also receiving pension payments. That's an earning in the current account side, but not related to exports or imports, nor is it a return on investment. Pensions from foreign governments are a credit in NSY. So that's all there is to the structure of balance of payments and how to sort transactions. In future videos, I'll be looking at the relationships, trends and influences on these accounts and that's where the big marks are. So stay tuned for that. If this video has helped you, please like, comment, share and subscribe. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC Economics easy for you.